Chris Abraham Show. Happy Thanksgiving. This is Chris Abraham, The Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 18. It is Thanksgiving Day. I need to bring a bottle of wine, which means I'll bring two. Four o'clock to a home I don't know, invited by a friend I do. So, 33% less pathetic on Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday, and I used to get to uh, go to Thanksgiving at my friend David's and Rashana's house. So I'm going to get a few hours of work done. Uh, Feels like magic free time. Uh, Maybe get a haircut if the uh, salon, if the hair cutters is open. Otherwise, I'll just be a shaggy mess. And I'm off to Idito's Coffee to get myself a vegetable omelet with cheddar. And, uh... I love this Adobe sound cleaner because it's so freaking windy today and I used to buy all kinds of dead cats and muffs and floofs and furry hats and all kinds of things for my uh, recorder. And now AI cleans everything up so that I sound, I still sound like a nasally bitch, but I sound like a nasally bitch who is in a studio. So... You might not think I sound like a nasally bitch because nasally bitch is the, uh, is the baseline for what people are on podcasts. You might think in comparison to the adenoidal nasally bitches in the world that I have a deep, deep basso. Uh, however, when your best friend is Mark Harrison, who has very literally panty wetting voice, uh, I certainly feel like a a uh nasally whiny little bitch boy actually that's uh that's what my bio is on twitter and and mastodon it's like uh nasally whiny little bitch boy and that's my domain if you want to go to my dom- domain it's nasally little bitch boy.com so please visit me and sign up for my newsletter nasally bitch boy uh nasally little bitch boy newsletter.com Ah, what a beautiful day. I'm really happy that I only wore a sweatshirt and have shorts on and a baseball cap um, because the weather's perfect for it. I know later it won't be like that because in the morning the sun hits you and it warms your body because of solar. I am a solar panel d'amour. Um, happy Thanksgiving, all y'all. I hope you are eating gladly and happily. Uh, try not to behave like Chris Abraham at the dinner table. I don't like to think about it, but maybe one of the reasons why I'm not being fought over for inclusion at other people's Thanksgiving might uh, might be because people think I'm a complete wingnut and would bring bad uncle energy to any uh, any Thanksgiving dinner. The funny thing is, is uh, I if 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 I weren't invited by my lovely friend Roger. I would just be spending today like another day. I don't even think I would go out of my way to find turkey or anything like that. I think I would treat today like a a slow work day as opposed to a hard work day. So I was thinking about starving myself until dinner tonight, but I'm going to have an Idito's uh, omelet anyway because it's delicious and because I like spending money on them and because I want to say hello. And if they're closed today, then I will go to Starbucks and maybe get a omelet at uh, Bob and Edith's. So I have nothing to say today. I just am going to yammer until I get to uh, Idito's. Uh, so there's a TV show I really am liking right now. It's called Shark. And it's, I think, from 2006 to 2008, but might be about 2003. But it's about... This guy named Sebastian Stark, I think, and he's a he's a uh, 
defense attorney who becomes he's a defense attorney who becomes a public def, public prosecutor and he's a multi multi millionaire who has a an amazing modernist paradise home in Bel Air and a smoking hot daughter who uh, is a wonderful daughter to him and they have so much father daughter intimacy that sometimes even I feel a little bit weirded out by it. But it probably means that they have a healthy relationship, father-daughter relationship, because I feel like any healthy parent-child relationship in 2023 always feels inappropriate, right? To me, I had two narcissistic parents. I was an only child. And my mom has been quoted as saying to me, well, Chris, um, the reason why we didn't participate in your every day is because you were so smart that we believed you were smarter than us and ergo being smarter than us we thought you knew how to live your life more effectively and completely than we were capable of giving to you so i don't know if that's bullshit or something my mom and dad discussed or uh the fact that uh, a quote-unquote gifted child or a quote-unquote mentally ill child, or whatever I am, I know I have aphantasia and estam, uh, might be exponentially more expensive or more time-intensive, uh, requiring uh, 10x more nurturing, and feeding, and curating. You know, I would go from being uh, a wildflower to being a very expensive uh, orchid. So, I don't know. Uh, but... It's a really good show, and I really like it, and I am madly in love with every character, male and women both. I, I especially like the, oh, what is her name? I remember her name. Oh, no, I don't remember her name. I remember her saying her name, but uh, she is the blonde uh, attorney, the one who is sassy, big brown eyes, blonde, uh, smarter than everybody else, yada, yada, yada that trope. Oh man, I love me a brown-eyed girl. I especially love me a blonde-haired brown-eyed girl. For whatever reason, my ex-girlfriend, Wendy Gottlieb, gave me a real freaking chip on my shoulder about the, uh, the superiority of blue eyes or green eyes. But I've always loved brown-eyed girls. I've always loved brown eyes. Uh, hazel eyes, green eyes, blue eyes. Doesn't matter to me, but man, when I see a, a girl with big brown eyes, it just makes me so happy. Um, it's a good show. I mean, it, uh, it's very intentional. And everybody talks about Sebastian Stark like he's some hot guy. But he's like, you know, 57, 58, pockmarked face and not in any way traditionally beautiful. So I guess it explains that if you are 58, svelte, have some hair and are extremely rich and powerful, you might as well be an 11. Um, but it's such a good show. I'm watching it on Hulu, but I think it's also available for free on Vudu or something. I don't know. But, man, it reminded me at first a lot of the TV show that I really liked called Bull because uh, Sebastian Stark has a reproduction of a courtroom in his basement, but any mentions... Um, he mentions once, he mentions uh, having, like, uh, the technology to do what you might call it, uh, the technology to do, um, I don't know, the kind of probability testing that, that, uh, that Bull does. But it's an entirely different show, and I jumped the gun when I went on to Reddit and asked if, uh, if Stark and Bull were the same, similar you know, influenced by each other kind of thing. And everybody was like, nope. I like it. I like, in fact, sometimes I just ignore all of the scenes sometimes. I ignore all the scenes sometimes, scenes sometimes, except for uh, the relationship between, uh, the relationship between uh, um, his daughter and him. Her name is, I don't remember. I'm not... I'm not really thinking today, but, uh, but yeah, like, it's really interesting to see that kind of, like, intensity, interpersonal intensity between people, 
who love each other and are related, and that saying the wrong thing doesn't result in breaking the relationship, right? Uh, saying the wrong thing out of being heated or being afraid or being angry or feeling passion or just being overwhelmed or being confused and lashing out is not a death sentence that, um, in fact, it's perfectly normal and that uh, you can apologize, you can be contrite, you can apologize your way out of something. And it's not a, it's not always, it's not often, sometimes it's not a, uh, a permanent mark on your, on your record. And, oh, that's really interesting to see. I feel like a lot of these shows are, quote unquote, allowing me to kind of process trauma once removed. I'm seeing people who are maybe, maybe idealistically, maybe irrationally, but uh, maybe it's not true. Maybe these kinds of things are fantasies, but I dare say I'm also the guy who used to think that when girlfriends would bring me to their family home during college, I was the guy who used to think that they were all, like I really must have thought that I was the main character, but I just assumed that there was a conversation before I arrived that said, mommy, daddy, everybody, Chris is coming. You have to be on your best behavior. Don't embarrass me in front of him, mama, papa. And I believe that that was actually something that happened. But turns out that the trope of the, uh, the trope of the completely dastardly, drunken, psycho, crazy, yelling, crazy uncle, drunken aunt, uh, wife who wants to divorce every Thanksgiving or every Christmas dinner the psycho melodrama isn't is is entertaining it's shakespearean it's uh it's good entertainment it's it's exciting uh it's other people's lives opls uh but that a lot of people have extremely kind gentle fun funny uh playful some people even get together and play music and play guitar together and uh play games and have merriness and mirth and uh that this popular trope of of thanksgiving being uh, a a uh, you know gird your loins and enter into the enter into the octagon is uh is a is a rarity um and that not everybody is a complete unhinged fucked up drunken alcoholic um uh what is the term from seinfeld where you uh you uh tell everybody your wrongs and how you've been wronged that you know the yelling and screaming of a scene from Seinfeld when the family gets together and they show their love by yelling at each other screeching at each other and so forth and on the other hand I think my New York New Jersey Irish mom I think that was her love language and because I wasn't brought up in New York New Jersey uh I considered what she did brash and rude and and uh, and uncouth and untoward and loud and screechy and 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 even here in the South Mid Atlantic, whenever I would invite my mom to like a Christmas dinner or whatever, she would humiliate me in front of people, and my friends would come to me afterwards and be like, "Are you fucking okay? Jesus Christ, does that woman love you?" I mean, most most moms can't wait to gush about how amazing their only son is, and your mom is completely humiliating you in front of everybody else at a dinner you planned. So, oy vey, I, you know, sometimes when, you know, sometimes you don't know, like when you normalize things, and when you live in a world where you've grown up that way, you don't know that it's not okay until someone tells you. Uh, the, the behavior that you've normalized and where you've placed the the baseline in your life, you need to be willing to move that baseline uh, because that normalization might be completely, complete psychopathy. And, oh, like 90% of gaslighting is when one gaslights themselves, right? So, you know, there's that Shaggy song called Was It Me? Most people are the 90% part of their denial and most people don't even need to, most people, most assholes don't even need to spend the energy doing much gaslighting. The person who loves them 
and the person who depends on them and the person who's normalized on their behavior um, as their baseline of behavior, uh, they oftentimes have the, have the, if you will, corporate memory, and they're often the ones that uh, are the enablers, ergo codependent relationships. The codependent relation is as responsible for being in that relationship as is the abuser, and it takes two to tango. So trauma needs to also take accountability in terms of what your behavior was in order to enable that experience to happen. Anyway, I'm here at Ididos. I love you guys. This season six, episode 18. And I guess this was my rent McRant face. Aloha, mahalo, love you, bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving. for listening to the chris abraham show make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes until next time